Hello, I'm Argle Fumpf. This is a review from Mom Zone number three, Getting Away is Deadly. I don't know what's going on with the alternate cover for this book. It looks like a romance novel where a striped person falls in love with the Washington Monument. Kind of creepy. So the premise is that Abby and Ellie are in Washington, D.C. because their husbands are there for military training. They're with three other military wives, and I honestly couldn't tell the difference between all three of them. Like the other books in this series, there are too many characters to keep track of. Their tour guide is Wellesley Warner, and she's not a very good tour guide because she takes them to the Capitol building and then just leaves. And she comes back two hours later to say, Hey, ladies, how's it going? You have the afternoon off. Bye! And then she just leaves again. I hope they're not paying a lot for her tours. Uh, at the metro station, there's a panic when somebody's murdered. He is pushed off the platform onto a moving train. Uh, the news station quickly identifies him as an illegal immigrant. Ellie did see him arguing with uh, Wellesley shortly before the murder, but Wellesley gets really hostile and says, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen that man. I've never heard of him. The prime suspect in the murder mystery is a new character, Summer Avery, and she's the uh, sister of Ellie's husband. So she's about college age, and you really can't depend on her. She's the kind of person who will say, yeah, I'll meet you for dinner tonight at five, and then she just doesn't show up, and it turns out she was at home watching TV the whole time. That's the kind of personality she has. So uh, she works for a high-level uh, lobbyist named Ms. Archer. Uh, mostly she's just the babysitter, not the assistant, because the archers cannot be bothered to spend any time with their kids. Uh, no, seriously. So they have not cleaned the kid's bedroom in four years, and when Ellie asks about that, Miss Archer gets angry. It's like, why should I clean Emma's room? Emma just sleeps in that room. Who cares what it looks like? So uh, this terrible mom is picked by Mom Magazine to get a special feature. So uh, that means the messy room needs to be organized in like three days. So it's going to be a rush job. Uh, Summer volunteers Ellie to do this work, which is so not cool. It's like Ellie's on vacation. Uh, Ellie is forced to work with this rude interior designer. He just makes things even harder because he doesn't know what kids like. He's like, I'm going to make a dark midnight scary room. It's like four-year-olds don't like dark scary midnight rooms. Sorry. <laughs> um... I, I think the interior decorator is getting paid for it, but Ellie isn't. Just another reason to, to make it terrible. Uh, another big story, like occasionally Ellie calls home and talks with her daughter, who's with grandma and grandpa. Occasionally she talks to her husband. Uh, the other big story is with McAnally. So he was in the military with Ellie's uncle. So he's badly beaten. She goes to the hospital to, to meet with him, and he tells the tragic story of what happened to Ellie's uncle. Uh, he was in Korea with the uncle and another guy, and uh, the uncle just snapped and started shooting wildly, and they were forced to kill him. Uh, back with the murder mystery, uh, the victim was working for the archers. He's a gardener for the archers, and he had an obsessive crush on Summer. He stalked her so badly that she started the process of getting a restraining order. Summer lies to the police about all of this. Yeah, and that only makes her look guilty when they find out, and then she continues to lie to the police uh, when they question her again. It's like she wants to be arrested. So one of the moms took a photo of the crime scene, and basically every single person in the world is there <laughs> at the crime scene. So uh, Wellesley was there, Irene was there, all the moms were there, uh, somebody who looks like Summer was there, and then um, like later on characters who we meet later on, turns out they were there too! Like at least five main characters were there when the, when the victim was killed. So Ellie does zero in on Irene. Irene is disguising herself and sneaking away from the rest of the group. It turns out that she's meeting a fertility specialist, hence her secrecy. So uh, Wellesley uh, gets into an argument with another gardener, and then uh, Ellie starts investigating the gardeners. It turns out that Wellesley is running like a fake marriage scam. So she takes illegal immigrants, uh, and she marries them to American citizens for lots of money. Uh, basically, they meet up at the courthouse, they get married, and then they never see each other again. Uh, you know, the immigrants get to claim their American citizens now, and the, uh, the American citizens get to claim tax benefits. So it's a huge fraud on, on, on both sides. And uh, when 
when she's confronted, Wellesley just gets really mad. It's not the only crime that she admits to doing, but she, she still claims, no, I, I, I did not kill the victim. Uh, shortly after this, uh, she's arrested by the police and removed from the book. Summer steals the victim's mail. He got a large check from Lena Stallings. She runs a group named Stand. So there, there's a military base in uh, Taylor, Georgia. She's just trying to make sure the military base doesn't get closed. Uh, like, again, I feel that Summer wants to get arrested because she drops everything and goes to Georgia without telling everyone. So she just leaves the state for no reason. And yeah, that looks pretty guilty when you're a prime murder suspect. At the photo shoot, all the military wives come and they help get the room ready for the photo shoot. So while the room is cleaned, uh, Ellie finds a memory card. It belongs to Tony, who is Ms. Archer's assistant, and it has the sensitive government information on it. And then there's this fairly long section, like 40 pages long, where they go to a swanky military fundraiser. And uh, everybody's wearing cowboy hats, too. So everybody gets to wear cowboy hats for this fundraiser, which I thought was weird. And uh, Tony grabs Ellie, shoves her inside a closet, and goes, Hey, I need that memory card back because I'm an undercover FBI agent trying to catch terrorists. See, the victim was secretly a terrorist, and he's part of a terrorist organization. We, I, I need that information now. Mm-hmm. So, oh, also, he has a big crush on Summer, totally wants to date her. I, I don't know much about this Tony guy, but I'm pretty sure he can do better. Like, she's probably going to lie to the police about him and then skip the state without warning. Uh, Ellie has not one, not two, but three big confrontations with Lena during this party. And also, she overhears Lena fighting with Mr. Archer. So, uh, Lena, she lies about her relationship with, uh, Mac and Allie. Uh, she confesses she had a romantic relationship with the victim. And then in the third big confrontation, uh, she says, uh, well, the victim was making me blackmail Mr. Archer in order to keep Taylor off the military's closure list. So Ellie finally tells her husband about the mystery at this point. We've had a lot of mystery going on. Now she finally tells her husband, oh yeah, by the way, the police are trying to arrest your sister. What? Yeah, yeah, th that seems like the sort of thing you tell your husband much sooner. And then this is followed by just a scene which is really hard to believe. I'm, I'm taking the cowboy hat off now, by the way. Um, she goes to the hotel lobby, and one of the terrorists is using the public computer there. And the terrorist is like, oh, excuse me, and he just leaves. But he doesn't shut the windows on the computer. So she sees his email, and is like, oh, terrorist email. And so she, she passes on all these terrorist emails to Tony, the, to the FBI, because the terrorist forgot to log off the public computer. It's ridiculous. So at a museum, uh, McAnally, he comes back and he says, guess what? I've just been cured of amnesia. Amnesia from like 40 years ago. This is also kind of hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, it's like, I remembered what really happened the day your uncle died. So uh, th there are three guys that's like, no, your uncle wasn't the one who snapped and started shooting people. It was the third person in the group, Mr. Archer. Mr. Archer, and Mr. Archer was working with Lena, who was a nurse at the time, and they'd been covering it up for like 30, 40 years. And he just remembered just now. So, uh, so Mr. Archer is the culprit. Uh, you know, he's covering up this murder from long ago and uh, the current day murder. He framed Summer for that by, he put on like a red Little Mermaid wig so he looked like Summer. And then he dressed up in Summer's clothes, too. And then uh, that's how he committed murder. He was just trying to frame Summer by dressing up like her. It's really creepy. A at this point, somebody knocks Ellie over the railing. And she almost falls to her death. We don't know who did it. I assume, like, Archer did it, right? But he, he like, helped save her. He's, like, one of three people who comes and helps save her. So was he really trying to kill her? Or was it somebody else who just pushed her over the railing? Uh, oh, and he's also in the uh, summer disguise as well. What can I say? The man loves his Little Mermaid wig. Uh, all the villains are arrested. Ellie gets a happy ending because uh, they have to rewrite the magazine story to be all about her. Uh, Ellie and her husband, they get sent to the Georgia military base. Although I doubt they're going to be there for very long because it was only open uh, because of blackmail murder cover-ups. Yeah. 
And uh, that's about it for the series. Uh, as I said, it's kind of hard to keep track of all the characters. Like, I forgot who Tony and uh, Lena were, which was kind of a problem because they become important towards the end. I got all the military moms um, mixed up. Uh, I did see complaints that this story is a bit too unrealistic. And they weren't complaining about, like, uh, you know amnesia cured after uh, 40 years or uh, the terrorist just happens to like sign on to the computer right before she uses it no they're just complaining about the fact that it's like so wait a minute so uh, her cousin's no, her uncle's murderer happens to employ her sister-in-law what, what's the exact thing a cousin puts the heroine in touch with the man uh, who's in a cover-up with the heroine's sister-in-law's employer, or the, the narrator's uncle killed by the sister-in-law's boss. Th yeah, it was a coincidence that all of these, like, this group of characters was just so closely knit together. That is, in fact, a pretty huge coincidence. Uh, as usual, there are travel tips at the end of every chapter, and you can tell these were made long before cell phones. Just... Definitely a pre-cell phone uh, <laughs> explanation of what you should do when you're traveling. Overall, I, I thought that was good. I probably liked it better than uh, the, the last two books in the series. I'd rate it like one point higher. Uh, I, I liked the setting. I thought the setting worked. It did get a little convoluted uh, towards the end. It almost, it almost felt like uh, the author wrote like 70, 80% of the book. And then came back and decided, okay, this person's going to be the culprit, and this is how the story's going to go down. So it, that's almost what it felt like with the like three confrontations with Lena in a row. It's like the author changed her mind when writing the book, if that makes sense. Uh, still, you know, I thought it was enjoyable. I liked it. Uh, there's not as much like danger and stuff as in the previous books of the series, but. I still thought it was okay. This, you know, <laughs> as always, I think this series is just a bit too long, and I would enjoy these books uh, much more if they were, like, 70 pages shorter, cut out, like, two or three of the characters and part of the storylines as well. But you know what? It's standard. It's a standard length for Cozy Mysteries, so what are you going to do about it? I I'm sure they'd rather uh, write books at standard length than uh, listen to me complain that, oh, I think this book is a little bit too long. <laughs> Thanks for watching my review. Bye.